Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways Homestead in the Desert. I didn't post last night because I was lazy. You know, it's been uh, 41 days in a, in a row now with uh, temps over 100 degrees. The record I, I understand for um, this area is 50 days. So we got nine more days to go. But the forecast says that we're supposed to get some relief uh, starting tomorrow. So hopefully uh, we do. And uh, I've been doing a few little odds and ends here, uh, just kicking around, but sure get lazy when it's really hot and then you get in front of a, a cool fan and then your eyes start burning because of the smoke that's in the air from the apple fire. It's, you can see all the haze in the sky over there. That's all smoke from the uh, apple fire. It's just terrible. And uh, your eyes just start burning and uh, you can't get rid of the burn. Uh, I'm sure the uh, air going into my lungs isn't that healthy either. But what can you do, right? All right, so a couple of things I've been doing here. Uh, number one is I started working on my um, tote koozie filter system. And uh, I think I should probably have this uh, up and running by tomorrow. But uh, let me see if I can get the cover off here with one hand. All right, so what I did was I put a um, half inch pipe thread uh, elbow fitting, screwed it through the cover right here, and then put a piece of that uh, same hose I used for the solar panel, the hot water solar panel on here, and then a female hose connector on here so my pump can screw onto that. All right, so then I put, I made this little thing up, and uh, this is two inch PVC with two slip slip caps on it and it's not glued it's just basically pushed together then I drilled a bunch of quarter inch holes around the outer edge all right and inside of this um, I bought one of these sponge filters that go on a shop vac for wet and dry shop vacs and then I squashed it and started at the seam and then rolled it up in a roll and kind of tight and slid it down inside the pipe and then put the cap on. So it's, it's completely a, uh, a sponge filter in there that'll let water flow through pretty easy, but it's gonna pick up any uh, sediment debris that uh, gets going through the pump. Okay, so that's gonna come out of there and that's gonna rain down. Now inside of here, for right now, I just put this little uh, sponge sheet that uh, came out of a toolbox, but uh, I don't like this. So I'm gonna be using actually a, uh, a screen mesh that I have that I'm gonna put down in there. And it's a um, fiberglass screen mesh, very, very fine. Just like uh, the screen on your windows or, or doors, you know, screen doors, things like that. So first of all, I'll be putting some of this, I got a bag here of um, charcoal. I'll be putting charcoal down in the bottom of this thing all through here and set up a nice layer, uh, probably about three inches deep with charcoal. And then I'll put that um, screen, that mesh screen over the top of that. Okay, then on top of that, I'm going to put some rocks. Uh, and I've got a, uh, well, actually, I think I'll use uh, rock tree leaves. I got loads of those out there. I'll rake up some rock tree leaves. I'll wash them off real well in a bucket, clean them up a really good, and then I'll put those in here on top of the on top of the charcoal, and then put another um, one of those mesh screens on top of that. Then I've got my play sand here. Okay, so now when I take this play sand out of the bag, I will put it into a bucket and fill the bucket with water and swish that around my hands and take out all of the fine sediment that's going to turn the water uh, murky brown. I'll, uh, I'll water my plants with that water, 
getting a little bit of the sand grit mixed in with the soil on some of the plants won't hurt it at all. It aerates the soil, it'll be good for it. And then once I get it, um, so it's when I put clean water in, it pretty much stays fairly clean. Then I'm gonna put about, oh, about a two inch layer of sand over the top of all of that. And then my cover will snap back on. Down here at the bottom, of course, I've got a male connector on the uh, hose connection and it's half inch pipe thread drilled through the, the plastic coated with my favorite uh, true blue sealant and uh, sealed in place. So this is basically a, a waterproof unit. When I snap this cover down with water in here, I could turn this uh, bucket over and there were no leaks. But uh, I'm gonna have pressure pushing in this and so I'm going to snap the cover down and then my idea is I've got some of these I don't call these clamps I call them holders because they, they're they're junk for clamps really they you can't get any pressure on them but what I'll be doing is I'll be putting three of these around this thing and uh, let me see if I could do this one-handed I'll be putting it like that and then uh, I'll sock it down like this and that'll hold the cover tight so that the pressure won't blow the cover off. So I'll have three of those and then these will end to actually end up being feet that'll sit on the ground and keep the bottom of the bucket up off the ground slightly. So that's my plan and uh, then I'll be able to filter the water in, at my tote koozie and have nice clean water flowing through there. So I had uh, different ideas about putting an elbow on the inside of that fitting and then coming up above the sand with the uh, piece of PVC and let the, the water go down through the sand and come back up and then have to go down the pipe. But then I won't get pressure. I want pressure in this. So the pressure from the pump will be blowing through here and coming out there. But my water will be filtered and clean when it comes out. Uh, that's what I got going on here today. Uh, of course, uh, every now and then I had to take a break and go inside and sit in fr front of my little um, evaporative cooler setup that I set up in, in my room there. And uh, the, with the fan running, it keeps me pretty cool. But I've got an idea of what I'm going to do is I got these square buckets right here and they're tall and square so I'm going to drill a round hole four inch hole in the top of this and then I'm going to use a four inch CPU fan and I should have some of those over here all right so here's my CPU fan so I'll have this blowing down into the bucket. And then on the front side of the bucket, I'm gonna have an opening there with uh, some um, screen mesh on that. That'll, I can uh, I probably put a fitting on there with PVC, like a three inch fitting or a four inch fitting that I can rotate one way or the other and direct the air in whatever direction I want it to go. Then I have some of this um, uh, cloth type stuff here, but it's actually rubber. And that's what I put in my um, sluice box. But I got a lot of extra because I bought, I had to buy a whole roll of it. So I'm going to put inside of the bucket, I'm going to have a, a water pump in there, like a little fountain pump that's going to pump water up. And I'm going to have that stuff built on a little metal cone. So the water comes up and runs down through that. So the fan on the CPU fan on top of the bucket is going to blow right down the center of that um, tube of that stuff with the water running through it. And then the air will come through that and be forced out the front opening on the bucket. So I'll have an evaporative cooler. And for the really hot days, I'll just dump some ice in there. I'll freeze some ice in my freezer um, in chunks, big chunks and throw that in there and uh, really cool the water down and I'll be able to 
cool a room down and all of that will be hooked up onto a 12 volt um, 15 watt solar panel so it'll all be run on a on a single solar panel with a battery backup so um, the battery will will handle it for uh, shadows or whatever it'll just keep on running as long as I want it to but it won't cost me anything to run it all right so before I close this off I'm going to show you something else I was going through my stuff today and I found all of these doorbell transformers that um, I had been experimenting with uh, back when I lived in the OC before I moved out here and uh, <clears throat> this in the center is just basically an old um, bathroom fan motor okay this had the bathroom fan uh, blades on it I took those off so I wouldn't chop my hands up while I'm working so anyway what I did was I these are not connected to the motor in any way you see they they just go side by side to each other then I put put them up against the um, the coils on the motor itself put them together so then what I did is I hooked these in series so what series means is I started with the black from the first one here or let's say the last one uh, the black from this one goes to the white of the next one then the black from that one goes to the white of the next one then the black from that one goes to the white of the next one so forth and so on so at the end I end up with one black uh, and one white so this is the white that's left on the end here and this is the black that's left on the end on the other end so that's a series setup okay so what this is going to show you and there is a video in my uh, playlist about this in electrical experiments and such so you might want to go in there and see some of the stuff I've been messing with uh, anyway I'm somebody was uh, put a comment in there I just saw recently that said uh, well, it doesn't do you any good to bring up voltage because uh, voltage is nothing. It won't um, help you do anything, light anything, or anything like that. So, uh, here's what we're going to do. Let me see if I can do this one-handed. So I got to get this plugged in here without getting shocked. Okay, the motor is running. You hear it? Okay, so now this thing is um, running a, say, say out a bathroom fan, and these were just pressed up against it. So coming out of that, I think on this one is probably just under 60 volts. So on 60 volts, here's, here's my little uh, unit, and it flashes every now and then. But if I take this yellow wire and I make contact here, look at that. We have light. Well, I don't know if you can see it. Okay. So, yeah, I can run a light off of that, an LED, of course. But if I added a couple more of these transformers on there, I could up the voltage and go to a, a larger bulb. So pretty interesting stuff. Uh, let me unplug that before I forget it. But uh, yeah, just uh, these are actually working as antennas. And this is acting as an antenna, sending off electricity through the air. And these are picking it up through the coils and putting it out through the wires on there in series. And the more of those I add, the higher the voltage gets. So uh, it, it could have some good uses down the line, but uh, I thought it was a pretty interesting little experiment. And uh, I want to set up a, antennas like these so that I can actually collect the electricity from the high um, powered uh, electric lines that run overhead across some people's properties. My neighbors up the road have that, and I showed them with my voltage tick how there's electricity right in the air, right outside, that, hey, it's cutting across their property. They should feel free to be able to harvest that and use it as they want. So <clears throat> I'm going to modify a better antenna than these 
so that it'll collect a lot of that electricity and then maybe, uh, you know, run a small TV or some lights in the house, whatever. That's about all I have for today. Oh yeah, I did fix the, uh, I did spend some time fixing the trailer today. Uh, this piece was broken off, remember, they, they broke the weld there and broke the weld there and broke the weld there and I had it jerry-rigged. Well, I re-welded the whole thing and then on this side had a broken uh, tail light. I put a new tail light on there so it's back up and running. And yeah, these two by fours are so that they extend the bed to a 10 foot bed from a eight foot bed so that I could carry three of the IBC totes on here and then put three more on top so I could carry six on this trailer. So anyway, as you can see, nice and solid now. Don't have to worry about that thing falling off and dangling. No uh, temporary repairs this time, all welded properly. All right, thanks for joining me. This is G Bear saying, don't forget to give me a thumbs up down there, please. Those count, they really do count. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. It's free. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything except a little bit of energy to tap your finger on the word subscribe below the video. And then when the little bell icon comes up, just tap on that little bell icon. Well, it, I think it can all be done in under one and a half seconds. Uh, please subscribe. It counts. It helps us. All us YouTubers don't do this just for the fun of it. We're doing this to earn some cash. And front, bottom line, I'm doing it to earn some cash. And the more subscribers and the more people that watch uh, the videos and the more people that give me thumbs up, and the more people that watch the ads and the visit the advertisers every now and then and see what the advertisers are talking about, that all counts. You know, all throws in a few pennies here and a few pennies there. And when you're off grid, every penny counts. So I appreciate it. I thank you all in advance. This is G Bear signing off.